fluid flows are classified as compressible and incompressible flows, where the fundamental difference is related to its density. In the case of incompressible flow, the density of the fluid is relatively constant. On the other hand, in compressible flows, the density is no longer constant. It varies in both time and space and is a function of other flow variables such as velocity, pressure and temperature. In engineering, fluid compressibility becomes important in flows such as transmission of gas distribution pipelines in power plants, the propulsion of gases in both rockets and jet engines, flow of air over large commercial aircrafts, and in designing gas turbines and compressors. Because of the plethora of engineering applications, compressibility is generally treated as a specialized branch of fluid dynamics. Apart from the typical conservation principles, such as the conservation of mass, momentum, and energy, we include another set of equation called the equation of state to understand the physics of compressible flow. In this lesson, we will introduce some basic elements of this branch of fluid dynamics. When you think of compressibility, what kind of matter do you think of? Fill three syringes each with a solid liquid and gas. Cap their nozzles and push on the plunger. What do you think will happen to each of these three phases of matter when pressure is applied? The solid and liquid probably resist your push on the plunger a lot more than the gas does. A substance, whether it is a solid or a fluid, becomes compressible when an applied pressure causes a large change in its volume. Nearly all solids and most liquids are incompressible. However, in most gases, this change in volume is large and therefore are considered compressible. In such cases, the fluid density is no longer a constant and the measure of compressibility is defined using bulk modulus. For compressible fluids, the negative sign becomes positive when an increase in pressure induces a corresponding decrease in volume. Compressibility is defined as an inverse of this bulk modulus. To fully define the state of a fluid, we need to fix two out of these three variables, density, pressure, and temperature. With incompressible flows, if we fix density and temperature, we obtain the pressure. However, for compressible flows, since density is no longer constant, this is a function of fluid pressure and temperature, we need to take the help of another branch of physics called thermodynamics, which studies the effect of work, heat, and energy of a system. Thermodynamics is a complex subject on its own and for our purpose, it is sufficient to briefly dwell on one subtopic of thermodynamics called the equation of state. For gases, the relationship between pressure, temperature and density is given by this equation. Many substances show complex behaviors. However, under moderate pressures and temperatures, these behaviors are idealized and simplified using the ideal gas law, which states the following. Here, the gas constant is uniquely defined for each gas and is related to the molecular mass of the gas. R sub U is the universal gas constant. There are other gases for which Variables, pressure, temperature, and density do not follow the ideal gas assumption, and these gases are called real gases. In certain applications involving underwater acoustics and water hammers in pipes, liquids too behave 
like compressible fluids. In these applications, Tate's empirical equation is used to relate pressure with the liquid density. Here, the relative change in density of the liquid due to changes in pressure is given by a parameter called the bulk modulus and is defined as follows. When you think of engineering applications where compressible flows occur, the first thing that comes to mind is a supersonic aircraft. While it took us centuries to build the first successful aircraft, it took us just 44 years from there to achieve supersonic speeds. In such compressible flows, when we are dealing with high-speed flows, these high velocities are generally compared with the speed of sound wave in that fluid. Supersonic as in higher than speed of sound. A sound wave is a low amplitude pressure wave propagating in that gas. Based on principles of conservation, we can define this parameter using thermodynamic quantities in that fluid. Based on this expression, the speed of sound in an incompressible fluid is infinity as there is no change in density in that medium. So, if you have music playing by poolside, you can hear it when you're sitting by the pool or even when you're underwater. But if you were to go inside a perfectly sealed room, you would not hear the music anymore. For a gas, using the ideal law, the definition is rewritten as follows. The speed of sound wave in a medium is dependent on the medium's temperature. Moreover, gamma is related to specific heats at constant volume and pressure. Specific heat of a gas is defined as the heat energy added to the gas per degree rise in its temperature. If this addition of heat occurs at constant volume, it increases the internal energy of the system. When added at constant pressure, the gas expands and does work. A dimensionless number called the Mach number is used to characterize the velocity of the fluid with respect to speed of sound in that medium. It is defined as the ratio of local velocity to the speed of sound. Depending on its value, we categorize the flow field into four different flow regimes. Subsonic, transonic, supersonic, and hypersonic. In low speed subsonic flows, the compressibility of the fluid is ignored and occurs at Mach number lower than 0.3. As the Mach number increases, the fluid starts to show compressibility effects. In transonic flows, the local fluid velocity becomes comparable to the speed of sound. This leads to the appearance of local shock waves and adversely influences the fluid drag experienced by the body. Generally, transonic flows occur when the local Mach number is between 0.8 and 1. The next flow regime deals with supersonic flows where Mach numbers vary between 1 and 5. Such flows are characterized by supersonic shock waves and the effects of aerodynamic heating becomes extremely important. The first supersonic passenger airliner, Concorde, operated at a maximum Mach number of 2.04 during its flight. The last high-speed flow regime is commonly referred to as hypersonic flows. In this flow regime, the Mach number is usually greater than 5 and is particularly observed in vehicles during re-entry as they enter Earth's atmosphere. These objects experience mammoth temperature rise, including chemical reactions in gases which must be accounted to predict the fluid properties during these hypersonic flows. 
The occurrence of shock waves is a common phenomena during compressible flows. Shocks are compressed pressure waves over very short distances across which variables such as pressure, density and temperature increase sharply. Sonic booms are the sound waves associated with shock waves. In the recent past, we have seen history being made with SpaceX recycling rockets. When Falcon 9's first stage returned to land on Cape Canaveral, the sonic boom followed through for several minutes afterwards. To visualize these shocks, Schlieren photography needs to be used, which primarily captures the density differences in the fluid as dark and light regions. Shocks can be steady or unsteady phenomena. Typically, steady state shocks are of three types normal shock, oblique shock, and foreshock. Shocks oriented perpendicular to the flow direction are referred to as normal shocks. When these are inclined to the flow field, they are called oblique shocks. Bow shocks are typical of supersonic flows where the shock is displaced away from the impinging point of the body. Away from this body, the shock arcs backwards from the position similar to an oblique shock. Transient shocks such as blast waves from a volcano or a supernova explosion can occur in nature.